Good morning, guys. Got a whole video for you again today. Basically, I went to Gatley Gay car boot sale again on Sunday. The weather wasn't brilliant. Um, the, the car boot sale did fill up. We had two fields by the end of the day. And I did manage to pick a few pieces up. But I'm really disappointed in what I actually bought. But I, either way, there are a couple of really nice gems among there. But I'm just missing them. A couple of big ticket items. And just no gold today. So, anyway. For those of you who want to see what I managed to um, dig out of Gatling Gear car boot sale on Sunday, let's get started. I'm going to start off with a really, really nice miner's lamp. Now this one's a Thomas and Williams, and it's um, Cambrian type B, and it's number B136, and then obviously you've got the miner's number of 26. Everything's all on the plaque, very easy to read. This is just a standard safety lamp, but it is quite an early one. I can't, it is locked, so I can't undo it to have a look if there's anything stamped on the res. And there's nothing stamped around the top here as in um, any mines, so no idea which mine it came out of. But it is a really nice Thompson Williams, but it is a bit farm fresh, rusty. Now I paid £25 for it. But I see that at 65, 70pound all day long, not a problem. It's a really nice lamp. A little worn, but that just gives it character and you know the look of age. And that'll be a really nice addition to someone or even display in a pub or something. So that's a really nice lamp. 25 pound. I'm not gonna struggle to double my money on that one. Next one we had is a pretty much a brand new reproduction. Um, it's probably not 10 or 20 year old, but it's a musical example. It's lost this little loop off the top. But it cost me two quid. And that's going to go for a tenner, maybe 12 quid. So that's fine, I don't mind that. The miniatures you're looking for... Um, well, there are miniatures that are worth money. Original miniatures, six inch lamps. And they can be worth 100, 200 pound. So you want to watch out for those. Now I bought a really nice vintage copper kettle. Now this is a 20th century one, obviously. Um, registered design number 957385 with a pattern number. So it's probably 1950s, something like that. Uh, Mid-century kettle. And you'd be surprised, these sell better than the Victorian kettles uh, sometimes. People still use these on their gas rings. So, yeah, we got a really nice uh, kettle. Now, I paid a fiver for that one. But I see that at 20, 25 pound again all day long. No problem at all. It's tinned inside, so it is designed to be used. But yeah, nice little ebonized handle on it. Copper body, tinned. So, just a nice kettle. And for a fiver, it was okay. I would have liked it cheaper, but it's a kilo of scrap brass there. I've had a selection of glass um, fish and dolphins. Now this is the uh, first. I think it's some sort of Chinese fish. Looking at it, looks a bit like a Chinese fish anyway. Catfish with this bit of a nose here. Now it's got the original label on it of V Nansen and Co. Murano, Italy. So it comes with this original label. Now, the feet are supposed to be polished smooth there, so it sits flush on the thing. But there is a very small chip on the edge of this one here. And if you can see it, very small. But then it sits flush like so, sits on his nose and sits on his tail. So, very, very small chip. It's a really nice example. Lovely fish. We have a much larger... This one, no label. I presume the three of these are Murano. I don't even know what fish this is. It looks a bit like a tuna. Or well, it could be another dolphin, actually. Porpoise with a short nose. So it's going to be another dolphin by the looks of it. But either way, it's another nice example of Murano. Then this sort of Florida type looking fish. Um, I can't even think of the name of them. 
but quite a really nice iconic design there ground out pontal and polished smooth the three of those come in and they owe me a tenner now I see them at about £20 each so there'll be a good little return on them I also had this smaller dolphin now when I looked at that I thought instantly Wedgwood glass but no it's uh, got its original label for Langham glass but I must admit I did think Wedgwood when I saw the colouring and everything but no and this one cost £2 so happy enough with that I've had a few little bits of brass the first is a lady's nude leg with the high heel and it is a bottle opener so a nice little quirky bottle opener that was a pound and again that's gonna be 10 12 pound no problem at all just because of the novelty value of a, a nude leg to open your bottles it's not an old one but it is still novelty now this example here is a full nude lady bottle opener and she is full nude and this one's probably 1930s and again it cost me a pound and that one again is going to be 10 or 15 pounds no problem at all these actually sell on ebay as well for that sort of money but they'll be in my shop this one cost me two pound and we have a bronze fox head door knocker you can see the difference in color brown and yellow so we've got a bronze fox head door knocker two quid again 10 15 pound no problem at all it's just quirky novelty little bits of metal way that will sell and then i have this sort of bronze mousse and i quite liked it now she charged me two pounds and would not come down i just begrudged paying the <laughs> two pound for it i don't know why um, I have no idea what that one's worth a minute. It's a it's very small. It's nicely modelled though. Well, I say nicely modelled. I just like it. it. The casting isn't brilliant on the face. But a bronze mousse for two quid. I'll chuck a tenner on and try. But if it need be, it'll go down to a fiver. But we're going to try it a tenner. One of my favourite lots on the day is this. Now, I know exactly what it is now, um, but doesn't it have a sort of Scandinavian look to it? It's, um, when I bought it, it reminded me of the Thinker statue, or it may be like a, a variation of that, with a, using a child, I'm not sure, or just a sculpture. But, it's not Scandinavian, have you guessed yet? It's USSR, Russian. And there's the uh, labels. It's got a really really nice it's got a unglazed or matte glaze on there and I just love the innocence of the look she's about a foot 12 14 inches tall so it's a nice piece and this one cost me four pound in get the gay again made in USSR teched T E K T I'll have to look that up. I haven't done no research on this stuff yet. I haven't had a chance, guys. It's come in and it's just been sat here ready for me to film it so I can get it up for sale. But I do rate this. £4. Without doing research on it, I would have thought £40, £45. Could be wrong. Could be more. Could be a bit less. But that's what I saw when I bought it. And it's just a really nice, unusual piece. I could live with that in my own home. It's beautiful. So that was one of my favourite buys. As you know, I do do a little bit with toys, and I've had a selection of toys again, all 007 and things. So we have the Golden Eye car here, the Ferrari. It's the first. We have from Tomorrow Never Dies the BMW 750. Not very exciting, I know, but they still are what they are. This one's a little more exciting, which is the Zelotus. Yeah, the Lotus from the Spy Who Loved Me. That's the one I went underwater, the submarine. That was a cool one. 
I also had this very small, for your eyes only, Corgi boxed. Is it going to open in one way or another? And it's the little yellow. It looks like a VW Beetle of sorts, but I don't know what car it is. Bear with me. Citroen. It's a little Citroen. But in this little box, it's quite sweet. Now, I paid £3 for... Uh, they were £2 each. I had three for a fiver on the big ones. And on this smaller version, I paid him £2 for this one. Um, that's got to go back in there. There you go. We'll tour the box in a minute. And finally, we had this. This is not the first one of these I've had. It's a Kogi bus advertising Sandman potato uh, sandman porto and sherry I don't know what the hell's wrong with me this morning and it's also advertising a daily sketch 1200 pound crossword puzzle so a little advertising bus there double decker bus by corgi two quid you know each of these cars they owe me they owe me nine pound they're going out to 12 pound each so if you work out they sell in at the tenners, one, two, three, four, it's fifty quid back for my tenner. Again, good profit, good uh, good little collectible items, and they'll all sell. I've had a little bit of jewellery. I've got one or two more bits to show you first. So if you bear with me. Okay, so moving on. Now we have a lovely little slipper decorated um, jug. Nice rich blue glaze. Uh, cloth, Welsh obviously, I've obviously not pronounced it correct, but it is what it is. Now you would think, looking at that, it would be Iweni clay pits, or Iweni, but it's not. It is St. Fagan's pottery, and also came with its paperwork. St. Fagan's pottery by Gareth Lloyd. So, a bit of Welsh pottery there. Never seen any before. Didn't know St. Fagan's made pottery, but it is what it is. I don't think it's very old. And this one cost me a pound, and it's going to go out for... Well, I'm going to do a bit of research on it, but I would think 10 or £15, pound, no problem at all. But I can't see it being much more now. If it had been clay pits, um, then it'd be up 40 £50. Pound. But um, St. Fagan's... I don't think it's going to be above 20. Next piece I had, guys, was just for a bit of fun. Um, I was walking on the car boot sale and I saw Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, I'd already seen Nick's post where he put up he bought a Sonic puzzle, a cute Rubik's Cube ball, and he was asking £50. And then I saw this on the table and I thought, do you know what? Bit of Sonic the Hedgehog, we'll have a go. And it is an original Sega one. It's uh, not a copy. It's got the Sega logo copyright down here. Uh, so it is an original. So original Sonic the Hedgehog licensed money box. And it cost me a pound. And I had a look online. And do you know what they're worth? Between one pound and ten pound. There are many, many sold around a fiver, so it's going to be alright. It's just a novelty little piece. Sonic the Hedgehog, I'll chuck five or six pound on it, and that's where it'll be. But, yeah, he's smiling, I'm not. <laughs> it could have been nice and give me a bit, bit more profit. Um, I had a couple of coins, first day covers with the uh, coins for the Queen, Queen Mother, rather, 2002. These are the $1.00 coins now i haven't researched them so i don't know if they're silver or just plain nickel yet but they come in at two pound each and i already know i've got to buy around eight to ten quid each for them so it's not a problem they're going to be gone soon enough and they are the um republic of sierra leone 2002 one dollar so there you go then two combined with four pounds and they're going to be between 15 and 20 quid and they should go pretty quick now i know i don't do a lot with cameras but this lot 
was on a table and I just said, out of curiosity, how much? And she said, oh, two quid for the box full. So I had to buy it. Now we start off with a Canon Shoe Shot 105 zoom. Here's a 35mm camera. Now, the cameras I researched because I didn't have a clue. And when I got back to the car, we had a little look, and I had a little look in the shop yesterday with Richard. How are you doing, fella? And um, shockingly, this one ranges between 20 and 40 pounds, so it's going to be about 15, 20 quid. Comes with this case, too. Now, my money piece was this one. We have a beautiful, and here's a really nice example, of an Olympus Trip 35. And it is in immaculate condition. I've got its case, I got all its paperwork. I've got lenses and all sorts. Now the only thing I don't have is the flash. Someone must have bought the flash out the box before I got to it, which is annoying. Because when I looked on eBay, these cameras are regularly selling between 80 and 140 pound complete. I don't have the flash, so if I come down to around the 70, 80 pound mark for the two pound, bearing in mind 20, 30 quid for the other camera, or 15 quid, whatever it'll turn out to be, I'm really on a winner. So that was a surprising uh, result. I didn't expect it to be that sort of money. And it is in lovely condition, that camera. It really is. And I got a box full of different filters and films and all sorts. For two quid, it was just a really good buy. I got to get a battery for my Canon and check that's all working. And uh, I'll put that up. I'll probably put it up for 30, 35 pound on eBay and just wait for an offer. I've got another one or two pieces and then just a couple of little bits of um, cheap silver jewellery to show you. But this here is very similar to the boxing one I had the other week. Really strange that all of a sudden they're coming out on the boot sales. Now this one is for England versus the rest of the world football association. And you've got a football, and a whistle, a boot. It's just a really nice display piece. Now that cost me a fiver. And I can tell you now I'm putting 25 on that to take 20. So again, 4 to 1 on my money. And it's going to look wonderful in the shop once I've cleaned it up. I, in fact, I've got someone coming in today for the boxing one. So they do sell. Do you like big guys? Look at the size on that. We have a Southern Comfort advertising mirror. The Grand Drink, Old Drink of the South. That's really large mirrors, about three foot across, two foot tall, and it's in lovely condition. Now, I paid a tenner for that at the car boot sale, and I see that going probably 50, 60 pound in the shop. I don't know if I've ever filmed my Captain Scarlet. I bought that down in Bessemer. It's um, the Captain Scarlet version of the Tracy Island for Thunderbirds. I was always into Thunderbirds, not Captain Scarlet. But it's the cloud base. There is one little piece of the foot missing, brother, and that's all there. So that's a nice little buy. I paid £15 for that, mind, down in Bessemer a while back. But I didn't have room to put it out. I only brought it down this week for the uh, customer who've asked for it. Okay, guys, we're going to take a little look at some um, jewellery bits I've bought now. And believe me, there's nothing brilliant from the car boot sale, but I got some really nice jewellery I've had to show you from a charity shop. So we've got a simple silver heart and chain pendant. Nothing spectacular, guys. It's set with cubic zirconias. It cost me two pounds. It's worth that all day long. Um, these necklaces now will probably go in my £10 cabinet. I got a £10 cabinet where I just put pretty silver chains in there. And that's what they sell for. This one here it cost me three pounds, but it's a really pretty one. Again, set with cubics. So you can see there's a really nice, pretty one. 
struggling to get a light to catch it what I'll probably do is do a pan over all these now when you have a look at them we have a silver ring pretty standard again two pound probably go for a tenner silver cross and chain I sell crosses all the time for a tenner that's not a problem and a long chain this one's unusual it's um, it looks like a flower head mounted in glass I don't know if it's original but it looks it looks like a real flower head it's mounted obviously with sil sterling silver but the actual pendant is like a flower in glass so I'll put a, a chain on that and that'll be a, probably 15 or 20 pound guys purely because it's unusual and you can't buy it in jewelers another little standard pendant there again I'll put a chain on all these the more unusual ones I'm sort of I'd go up to like 15 but a bog standard one I'd chuck out of the tenner and I'd do all right with them I really do oh this was beautiful look at that for a sterling silver ring needs a clean look at the shine on that So we got a nice simple sterling silver ring but that one will be for about 20 25 pounds and again cost me two pound so that's the jewelry from the car boot sale now I've got some jewelry to show you from the charity shop as you know I I don't tend to go in the charity shop here because they bring stuff in and I value it from but of late they've stopped bringing the stuff in they're just putting prices on it themselves obviously feel you know they don't need me anymore which is absolutely fine now I'm walking past the window and they've laid out a load of jewelry in the window that's the first one now it's still in silver and all these are amber beads genuine amber beads really nice I love the colors on there you got a multitude of colors and the price is even better so £6.99 I'm going to put a chain on that and that's going to be probably £40-45 because of the amber that is absolutely beautiful really really nice pendant chuck a silver chain on it I might even rob Peter to pay Paul and take one off the cross by it or something but yeah I'm going to be about £45 on that so that was one that I was grateful they didn't bring in then they had this beautiful sterling silver and amber brooch resembling you know obviously leaves and that off the tree very organic and that one was a fiver solid silver again with real amber and you're probably talking that one's going to be about 20 to 25 pounds then they had a beautiful cubic zirconia cross set in solid silver for 199 again because of the size of that cross I put a chain on it just an 18 inch chain a thin chain I pick them up all day for a pound and that's gonna go up about 20 pound so for 15 pound give or take at the car, uh, charity shop I'm gonna have 45 65 85 about 80 pound return give or take that's not bad at all um, now when they bring stuff into me and I value it from I tell them what it's worth and I don't even go back in there to buy it because I I, th I would think it's wrong to undervalue something and go and buy it myself. But if they can't be bothered to come in and say to me, what's this, what's this, then I'm going to buy it. Plain and simple, if they put in their own price on it and they put it up for sale to the public, then I'm going to buy it. So, I think that's about it. Bear with me a minute. Yep, that's about it with the um, car boot sale buys, guys. As you can see, I'm very disappointed in what I've had. Um, I don't know why, because I have had some really good profits. You know, the camera, you know, it's going to be best part of under pound profit on that. The miners lamp, 40, 50 quid profits. You know, there's a, some good money to be made off this lot today. It just doesn't excite me. The only real thing that excites me that I really got any passion about is the USSR sculpture. Um, and I don't care if that turned out to be a fiver that may end up going in my own home because I do really like that I just like going out and finding really really unusual and rare items and 
today has been work in stock but we have to have work in stock that's what our bread and butter is that's our money at the end of the day but i just like to come on with one that one thing that i can go oh, i'm gonna keep that for a while and enjoy it apart from the ussr sculptures they've said there's nothing here that i'm gonna say i'm gonna enjoy it for a while and keep everything here is going straight up for sale and it'll just be a turnover other than that guys um other news <laughs> where do we start um okay for those of you who follow the videos you'll know i've done a beautiful shop and if you want to see the video of the creation of the shop and what the shop looks like i'll put the link in the uh, description so you can actually have a look at the shop and and two months into this new shop i've been here now for nearly two years um, but i was a couple of shops down and i moved uh, two months ago to the larger shop with a new landlord because obviously it was bigger than the same rent no brainer in that two months i have had the landlord in and out in and out all the time he's constantly coming through can i go out the garden and uh, do some work right fine whatever and then he comes in and he's oh i'm a customer having a look around but yet he's inspecting the property and constantly advising me on what to do anyway um he's always going on i fitted cctv cameras now last week and he's well what if i need emergency access i said well you just phone me if it is an emergent genuine emergency you come in other than that you phone me and i'll let you in uh so he won't happy with that well yesterday he came in to the shop he didn't even get through the door before he was ranting and raving and shouting i've got a poster by my front door advertising the previous tenants cafe which is now across the road opposite so i'm advertising them and they're advertising me it's a small town we all we're all small businesses we help each other so basically if i feel like it um depending on how much someone spends with me i can send them over to the cafe and they can have free teas and things um off pat we've done a bit of a um, deal so i can give them a little voucher and they can go across they can have free tea and sit down and have something to eat in the cafe and i do advertise her shop saying it's across the road because a lot of people come here and they still think the cafe's in here and I'd say no, there's a sign there, it says it's across the road, it's open to the public, it's not just for the old age and so on. Anyway, he came in and he took great offence to the fact that I was advertising for his previous tenant. Well, I'm sorry, I understand that you're upset she left you, um, but she paid her rent, she, she left on good terms. Um, I don't understand what the problem was. So anyway, he was telling me and shouting that he was very offended by the fact that I was advertising her. He said if it was someone else or the charity shop or whatever, he wouldn't care. And I just told him straight. I was very polite and I said, look, it's purely business. I understand you don't like the woman or don't get on with the woman anymore, but at the end of the day, it's business. I am advertising for her, she's advertising for me. We'd help each other out. And I said, that's the way it is. That's the business decision and it's staying anyway he stood there for a while and he threatened me basically he, he didn't say it in words but he implied that he won't be renewing my lease at the end of the year uh, over a poster now mind then when i still refused to take it down um he said you can't have it there it is subletting i said a poster is not subletting i said not to mention there is nothing no no clause in my contract that says i couldn't sublet if i wanted to there isn't a mention of subletting in my contract. Um, so then he starts going on that uh, he'll have to redo the contract for the next tenant. It's already implying that uh, he'll be putting me out. And I know what you're th probably thinking. You're probably thinking, it's not worth all this hassle over a poster. But it's not the poster. It's the fact that I'm paying the rent on this business and I will run the business how I see fit. Today is a poster tomorrow is oh you can't sell that in the shop it offends me you can't do that in the shop that offends me At the end of the day is my business i will sell what i want within the law in my shop i will do what i want within the law within my shop At the end of the day as long as this shop is maintained and as you can see in the videos it is well maintained beautifully presented i do all the upkeep i pay the rent i pay the insurance i do not need him coming in telling me what i can and can't do so it's not just the fact it's a poster because i spoke to pat and she said take it down i said no i'm not taking it down i said where do you draw the line i will not be bullied in my own shop At the end of the day just because he 
fell out with her because she left. Doesn't mean he can dictate to me what I do. So pure principle, I have said, no, nope, I will not take that poster down if he kills me. Now, I went home last night and read the contract. And according to the contract, even though it's for a year's lease, we can still give a month's notice uh, to terminate the contract. So what good's a year's lease if you can still give a month's notice? I don't know, but uh, either way. And after the year's up then, it's a two-month uh, notice. So if he comes in and gives me notice, he gives me notice. He's going to find himself slapped with a lawsuit then for covering my costs of moving from that shop to this shop and to the next shop. So that's what's going to happen. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I'm not going to be dictated to, because what's next? He'll come in, I'll have, you know, I'll have something in you that offends him, you know. Maybe it's a sword. I got samurai swords. It's not only reproduction ones, but I got swords. You'll say, you can't do weapons in the shop. Or you can't do ivory in the shop. You can't do bone in the shop. You can't advertise this in the shop. I don't like smoking. Whatever. I'm not going to be dictated to. So, how long I'm in this shop now, I don't know. Um, will I rent another shop? Probably not after this landlord. What I'll probably do next is buy a shop. So, I... I'm assuming at the moment, because you haven't been back in yet today, that I've got one year now to find a new premises. Um, should he give me notice sooner, then I'll have to find something sooner. And we'll see how things go. But I'm not going to back down, because I'm not going to be dictated to. In addition to that, he's got a set of keys, and he's constantly saying, oh, well, i got to come in and do work. Well, legally, he isn't allowed to come in and do work without giving me notice, unless it's an emergency. So it's actually got to the point now where I'm emptying the till and locking the shelvings and things like that at night when I never used to in the other shop. I was confident if I left money in the till, it'd be there. But I don't want someone coming in. I don't know if he's going to bring someone in with him. So all in all, I'm not comfortable at the moment. So my, my future in this shop is uncertain at this moment in time. So we will see what happens now in the next couple of weeks. He may calm down and uh, settle down. Um, but he stomped out here yesterday saying, well, we'll see what we can do about this poster. I will not be threatened. That's the one thing I won't be. I was bullied in school and I will not be bullied as an adult. Not a hope now. So, if he gives me notice, he gives me notice. I've got everything on CCTV and I will put it all over Facebook and nobody will rent this shop off him. Nobody. They will not want a landlord that is that temperamental. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, guys, uh, <laughs> as you can see, it's been one hell of a week. I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you've enjoyed having a look at the bits of stock. I'm sorry it's only uh, working stock today, but uh, still pays the bills. Thanks for watching, guys.